Welcome to the 10 Minute Mindshift Podcast. I'm your host, Janet Kegel, certified life coach, weight loss coach, and lover of all things related to upleveling my life and yours. My goal is to help you get one step closer to your goal, whatever it is. My goal is not to keep you wrapped up in self help all day, just 10 minutes. And who doesn't have 10 minutes, right? Hey there, welcome back. I hope that you are all living well and living the dream of living your life by design. I would love to hear how you're doing and how this podcast is helping you. So don't be shy. Let me know. This is episode number 84. And today we are talking about the number one reason why we commit to a goal and then quit. There are actually several reasons and many ways that we do the commit and quit cycle, but today I'm going to boil it down to the biggest and most powerful reason why we commit and then quit. We're coming up on the new year at at the time of this publication, and so now is the time that most of us are goal setting at work and in your personal life, and it's a great time to identify the quit obstacles and then go into the next year armed with the tools that you need to overcome the quit obstacles. When I'm coaching my students in the area of relationships, one of the things that we talk about is a want match. In short, a want match is, for example, you have a desire to work out with your partner and your partner wants that too. You have a want match. We have a relationship with our goal and just like we have a relationship with humans in many respects, and so the deeper that you go into your relationship with your goal and really understand it, the more likely you are to achieve it, whatever it is. So if you use the want match as a way to better understand your relationship with your goal, one of the things that I notice is that we want the outcome or the result without wanting to do the work to create the outcome of the result. So as it relates to relationship with our goal, we actually don't have a want match at all. We have a want mismatch. A want mismatch has us at odds with our goal. When we are at odds with our goal, just like when in any human relationship, it becomes harder to stay excited about it. It becomes harder to do the mundane day-to-day tasks. It becomes a chore instead of something that we are excited about creating. So here's the deal. We just need to work on the relationship with our goal. That's all. That's it. All right, my friends. So buckle up. This is going to be an interesting ride. Wanting the outcome of the goal is not enough. Let me say that again and let that really sink in. Wanting the outcome is is not enough. You must do the work to nurture and cultivate and curate the human. And that is you, my friend, so that you become the person who can create the outcome. Just like in a marriage or a significant relationship, just wanting the partner and connection is not enough. It takes nurturing and cultivating and curating with the relationship to make the relationship and partnership fruitful. The pattern is the same for all of us. We all have this want, this desire to create a certain outcome. And so we get excited. We really, 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 really want this thing. And listen, it doesn't even matter what the thing is, but we know we want it and we can't stop thinking about it and what it would be like to get it. And then when we take a few steps on the journey and we start feeling the growing pains, it starts feeling harder than we expected. It starts taking longer than we had hoped. We feel uncomfortable with some of the emotions that come up for us on the journey. So we start second guessing the goal. When we only want the outcome without wanting the journey, we have a mismatch in the relationship with our goal. And that is what has us at odds with our goal. Listen, it's perfectly normal to be at odds with your goal from time to time, just like you're at odds with your significant other from time to time. Sometimes the work is to get back on track, to realign with our goal and to refocus our energy. That, my friend, is exactly where I find myself. I'm in the process of doing that exact same thing. My goal to bronze and English dressage requires that I get really granular with my micro goals of finding a trainer, finding a suitable place to ride, settling Dutch into the trailer situation better, working on my fear, settling Dutch at the trainers, reestablishing a routine, reestablishing our connection. He has had a pretty tough summer. 
it's not just about learning the lead changes and the counter canner. It's all of the micro things that go along with it. Here's the deal. Some days it's easy and the rides go well and he's comfortable and confident. Some days it's a struggle to connect and we are off balance and it feels hard. Last week, I noticed myself having thoughts like, I'm done. This is it. This is too hard. I don't want this anymore. This doesn't even make sense to work this hard. But when I shine a light on those thoughts, it's just a want mismatch. My brain doesn't want to have to do the micro things in order to create the macro outcome. And that is exactly what your brain does too. Now, here's the good news. You have me to coach you through it. So when we feel at odds with our goal, how do we get back on track and avoid the quit? It's simple, although it's not easy to execute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into ICU. Number one, challenge your thought. Don't accept that at face value. Remember, just because you have a thought does not make it true. Your brain lies to you on the daily, on the hour, almost minute by minute. So I want you to run an inquiry, an investigation. What's going on when you feel the thoughts coming on that are out of alignment with the outcome that you want to create? It's the first letter in the acronym ICU, which is what we need to do as soon as we feel a big quit coming on. I'm going to talk about little quits in the future, but today when I want you to really think about when that big quit comes on, it's time to triage. So the I, stand, the I stands for inquiry. You must ask yourself powerful questions versus shallow, ego-centered questions. The quality of the question determines the quality of the answer, and that, my friend, determines how quickly you can get back on track. Some of the questions my ego asks is, why is this so hard for me? Why can't he just trailer like every other horse? Why is he so distracted? Why can't he just pay attention to me? If I go into my prefrontal cortex and I ask powerful questions instead, it sounds like, what does he need in a leader right now? How can I be more interesting? How can I support his fears right now? What can I do in the next minute to set us up for success in the next hour? Do you see how that works? One thought process has me thinking all about me wallowing in self-pity and self-doubt. And the other thought process has me thinking about how I can be the human he needs me to be. I'm not kidding though. The thought to quit gets strong sometimes. So I get it. If I'm being real and authentic and transparent, this goal stuff is not for the average at all, but it is why you are here. So number two, the C in ICU is to calibrate. There are times on this journey that our sights become off. We need to calibrate. We need to adjust, regulate, reattune, bring it into line, bring it online, bring our desire back online. You do that by setting your tomorrow self up today. Okay, so that might be like, what the what when you hear that? So here is what I'm talking about. Your future self isn't only a year from now, or five years from now, she is tomorrow. She is in the next minute. She is in the next hour. She is that close. So how can you set her up right now? What can you do and think and feel in the next minute and the minute after that and then the rest of today? That is going to set her up for tomorrow and next week and next month. That's a powerful question for you right there. As soon as you go into planning for tomorrow, you take yourself out of ego and lizard brain and you enter prefrontal cortex. And that, my friend, is right where you need to be. You also create a closer connection to yourself with your future self, the human that you are becoming. Okay, number three, the you is for up level. Up level your mindset by creating ladder thoughts. I go into detail on how to do that in previous episodes. I'll put the link for it in the show notes. What can you do right now that is an incremental upgrade and up level your mindset? Don't try to fix everything all at once. Uh, all at once. Just fix the first thing first, the first thing in front of you, and then fix the next thing and the next thing after that. So the other day I was writing Dutch. 
And he was distracted and worried about horses. He couldn't, he couldn't see, but he could hear them. And I could feel him ball up and bow up underneath me like he wanted to bolt towards that horse. Now, I'm not going to lie. It was scary and I didn't like it. And if you would have asked me in that moment about my goals, I would have said, what goal? I think I'm done. So if we're applying the lesson here, here is exactly what I did. I asked myself, what is bothering me? He's acting like a horse. That's what horses do. What's wrong with that? It bothered me because he wasn't paying attention to me and he was longing for a horse he couldn't even see. And that ticked me off if I'm being honest. Now, that's a little dramatic, but the truth of, but that is the truth of what I was thinking. So can you see how useless those thoughts are? He's not longing for a horse he can't see. He's being a horse. That's what horses do. I just need to get his attention back and quit being so worried about him acting like a horse. I got there by inquiring and investigating my thoughts and asking myself powerful questions. If I were a non-emotional horsewoman and understood what was going on, how would I show up differently? The second thing I did was calibrate. I made adjustments to my energy and decided how I was going to show up for this ride. I could be timid and beg for his attention, or I could be his leader and I could command his attention. Finally, I up-leveled my thoughts about the current situation. And I didn't think any more thoughts about being scared or that he has my number or that he's ignoring me. Instead, it was what can I do right now in this moment to get his attention as his leader. That is way more powerful than the thought, I'm not cut out for this, I'm thrown in the towel. Listen, the brain is a powerful entity and it throws you whatever thought it thinks will get you go to go back to bed eating ding-dongs and watching reruns of Real Housewives on Hulu. So I get it if you feel the big quick coming on in the works, but you don't have to let that be the result. I can help you integrate these tools into your being and into the framework so the quit does not take hold. This is the time of year that we were we are all thinking about what we can do to create next year. Let me help you by actually creating the result this time. Let's do this, my friend. It is as simple as an email. Let this be the year. Even if you're hearing this for the first time in the middle of next year, you can start your goals at any time. It doesn't have to be the new year. All right, my friends, I hope this has been helpful and useful to you. And now I hope that you have the best day ever. That's a wrap. I hope that you were able to experience a mind shift of your own today. Listen, if you love this podcast, you should totally check out my Life by Design six-week boot camp. It's a work-at-your-own-pace workshop and something that you can do over and over and over again to up-level your results. If a one-on-one coaching program is more your jam, I am all in. Just shoot me an email and get ready for a transformation at the speed of life.